Hello and welcome back to Janet Gets Creative. Today we are doing another no box art box challenge. I really love doing this. I'm so glad I brought this series back. My goal is going to be to do at least one of these a month on my channel. We're going to be doing an old scrawler box today. Last time we did a sketch box. This is a scrawler box and I'm excited for it. Let's get to it. No box art box time and this time we are replicating scrawler box October 2017. For those of you who aren't familiar with no box art box, this is a simple art challenge. Pick a past box of any subscription art box, craft box, whatever you want to do it for. Rule number two, you match the supplies that came in that box as close as possible with things you already have. If you didn't get the box in question, fair game. If you did, try not to just use the box. That defeats the purpose. <laughs> and number three, go ahead and do the challenge. If it's a box like the one we're going to do right now, a scrawler box, it comes with a prompt, do the prompt. If it's more like a sketch box and it didn't come with a prompt, just go for it. Feel free to make whatever you wish using the supplies that you have gathered to replicate that box. So, for October 2017 Scrawler Box, that box came with a Derwent Graphic Line Painter Palette 1 Pack, an Art Ergoline 3400 Fine Liner, that was a 0.4mm Fine Liner, a Zig Kuratake Rider Twin Tip, the two tips are 0.5 and 1.2 millimeters. A Stedler Woodless Graphite Pencil in HB Lead. And a Hannah Mule, sorry, <laughs> A6 Sketchbook with 125 GSM Mixed Media Paper. And the challenge is Equilibrium. For that graphic line painter, I happen to actually own that exact palette one set. If you didn't, this is a small set of fine liner style. Is it 0.3 or 0.5? 0.5 nib size pens with acrylic ink inside. So it's up to you to decide if you don't have these, if you want to go for fine liner style colored pens of some sort or if you want to get a really fine brush and use paint. Either would work. I actually have these and I did not get this particular box so I'm gonna use them. Art line, Ergo line 3400. I do not have that particular liner. I only have one, maybe two art line liners and none of them None of my liners in any brand are 0.4, so I'm going to use this Unipin fine liner in 0.3. I was considering doing 0.5, but that uh, Kuratake one we have to replicate has 0.5. I do happen to have a Kuratake Rider twin tip. This is the for vellum one. I don't believe that's what they're referring to here, but it is the same sizes. There is a 0.5 tip and a 1.2 tip. If you didn't have that, then you could just get two different markers or fine liners to replicate that. Basically, for your for your 0.5 tip, you want something that's going to do a 0.5. This is that plastic nib, not the metal fine liner nib. So something like a, a Micron PN or maybe one of your Tombow liners is probably best. And for this end, if you didn't have that, you know, a standard Sharpie is about that size. <laughs> Just ideas. Stedler Woodless Graphite Pencil. I do not have a Woodless Stedler. I do have one Woodless, but it's a Jumbo and I hate Jumbo. So I'm just going to use my regular Stedler Mars Lumograph in HB. And then that Hannah Mule, I don't know how to pronounce that, A6 sketchbook, again, don't have that. I do happen to have an A6 mixed media sketchbook, this is Pentallic. If you don't, whatever, just grab some mixed media paper. If you don't even have mixed media paper, I, printer paper doesn't really matter. But anyway, the challenge is Equilibrium, 
and I am going to do a piece that represents equilibrium with just these supplies. So the featured artist from the October 2017 Scrawler Box was Jody Beckley, and her equilibrium piece that was included as a print is a Mandela titled Duality. It's half high detail in black and white and half messy detail in color. I thought that was a really cool idea, so I borrowed it. The Mandela design you see me doing is entirely my own, but I'm giving credit where credit is due, and this is based on Jody Beckley's duality. I bought this pack of line painters after seeing Duality when I first came up with the concept of No Box Art Box and I was res researching past boxes. Originally I thought I was going to end up eventually getting the whole collection, but I'm really glad I decided to start with just the first pack and not go all in. I love the colors and the idea of these pens, but in execution they're quite messy. They like to make random puddles when you least expect it. <laughs> Sometimes you can get it under control, and other times you have to just roll with it. I, I know Derwent recently re-released this product line, and I'm curious to know if they've improved the flow mechanism, but I'm not interested enough to buy them and find out for myself just yet. Comment down below if you have, or have tried the new ones. Let me know. I've actually got a half-finished Mandela further back in this sketchbook that I was doing in these pens when I first got them, but I was getting so tired of waiting for them to dry and I left it for another day and have yet to finish it. <laughs> this is my cabin sketchbook and it's pretty much only Mandela, so this piece is really quite fitting. You'll see that other Mandela with these pens eventually because I do plan to make a sketchbook tour of this one when it's full. By the way, if you're new here, please do subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I upload every Tuesday and Thursday minimum, at least twice a week, but occasionally I also put out bonus videos. I'm an art channel, but I also do crafts, tutorials, and related product reviews on occasion. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. What do you think of the No Box Art Box Challenge? Are you going to try it someday? If you do, I'd love to see it. Feel free to tag me wherever you upload it, send me a message about it, link it in the comments on any of my Nobox Artbox videos I want to see! <laughs> so just to fill the silence for the rest of this video, I'm going to be responding to some r slash ask reddit questions. Feel free to also leave your answers in the comments down below, and if you like listening to me go off on storytime tangents, check out my second channel linked in the description box below. It's called Game and & Gab, and it'll be launching very soon, possibly even this week. It's a mobile gaming footage with storytime ramblings inspired by r slash reddit questions and whatever else sparks an idea as I browse reddit. <laughs> User FantasyFlyer3 asks, what's the most superstitious thing you ever heard? While I was pregnant, my older female coworkers would constantly tell me not to cross my legs when I was sitting in the lunchroom because it was bad for the baby. <laughs> I don't do a true leg cross. I only hook one foot behind the other at the ankle. And they would also tell me if I craved something and I didn't immediately eat that thing, then my baby would be born with a birthmark in the shape or color of the thing that I craved but didn't eat. Spoiler, my daughter doesn't have any birthmarks, and even though I crossed my ankles while sitting when uh, she was born healthy two days before her due date. <laughs> User Sal Dally asks, if you were on death row, what would you request for your last meal? Barbecue sockeye salmon with mashed potatoes and corn on the cob. <laughs> User V Timix asks, people who use baby on board bumper stickers, do people actually drive any safer around you? No. But that's actually a common misconception. Those bumper stickers and back window signs aren't there primarily to tell the car behind you to back off. They're there to let emergency responders know that there's a helpless tiny human in the back seat in the event of an emergency. 
Kind of like those X number of cats live here signs you might put on your front door in case of fire, or those I have a dog at home, please call so-and-so cards that some people keep in their wallets in case something happens to them. User Suave Kim Jong Un asks, what is your guilty food pleasure? Cookie dough. <laughs> I have been known to mix batches of chocolate chip cookie dough and never actually bake it. <laughs> User Wizard of Chaos asks, what is the least bad option for you? Losing either your smartphone, wallet, or keys. Definitely keys. I don't own my own vehicle, so losing my keys out in public wouldn't strand me. And between the several people who have a key to my house and the one hidden spare, I'd never be locked out. The only real inconvenience would be the mail key, since Canada Post doesn't let you make copies. So we'd probably have to get them to change the lock on our mailbox. User Hot Water Bear asks, What's the most recent movie you laughed out loud at? Mordecai. I was discussing the Avengers films with someone recently, and I looked up Paul Bettany on imdb.com to prove I was correct in saying he's Jarvis slash Vision, and when I was there on his filmography listing, I somehow discovered that he was in a film with Johnny Depp, so I checked to see if it was on Netflix, and it was. <laughs> Boy, am I glad I did, and I have no idea how I managed to miss it for four years. If you're a fan of either of those two, Gwyneth Paltrow or Ewan McGregor, do, your do yourself a favor and watch that movie. User Two Spirited Away asks, "What's your crazy ex story?" Well, I have two crazy exes. <laughs> uh, one is just pathetically crazy, and the other is legit scary crazy. I'll save number two for another time. Pathetically crazy once confronted me on a public bus sometime after our breakup to accuse me of spreading rumors about him. Apparently his older half-sister overheard someone named Jen talking smack about someone named Steve, his name, at the university I was going to at the time. I pointed out to him that I never did meet his sister in our mere two months together, and we never put up pictures anywhere, so how would she know what I look like? And Jen and Steve are extremely common names. <laughs> then I got off the bus. <laughs>